Hi, I'm Paris, and if you're like me, you might have wondered after getting your COVID vaccination, did it actually take? How can you know that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do to provide you your protection? Some lucky people, they got to have all the side effects. They got to have the fever and the sweating and the joint pain. So obviously in their body, there was a recognition by their immune system. Hey, there's something there. Let's go and get it. But for me, I just had a little bit of discomfort in the upper arm the next day and that was it. So I'm left wondering, hmm, is that going to do the trick? The only way to know how much response the vaccine triggered in your body is to look at your antibody levels, which isn't very easy for the average person to do. But here in Texas, there's a program being run by the University of Texas where they test your antibodies. They're basically getting people to sign up to volunteer for this. And you go in, it's a blood draw. They take your blood and they look for antibodies both to the virus itself and because they're a little bit different, uh, antibodies to the vaccine. So they can both tell if you've had COVID and if you've been vaccinated, how many antibodies you have running around looking for COVID. So when I learned about that program over the summer, I immediately signed up and I was accepted and told to go to the lab to have my blood drawn and that in a few days, they would text me my numbers. Part of the reason I was so concerned about this is because last year I got a cancer diagnosis and over the winter I was doing chemo. So I was very immunocompromised. My white blood cell counts dropped down to just about zero after a reinfusion. Now my last chemo infusion was the middle of February and right about that time here in Central Texas we were getting vaccines available for people who, were, who had um, pre-existing conditions or were immunocompromised like me. So as quickly as I could, I signed up to get my shot. And so March 3rd, I got my first dose of the Moderna vaccine. And as I mentioned, I didn't have a whole lot of reaction to it. And it started me wondering, hmm, well, if I'm immunocompromised, I have low white blood cell counts. Maybe the shot isn't triggering much of a reaction in me, in which case I may not have particularly good protection. So I continued to stay away from other people, even outdoors. If I was walking down the street and someone's coming towards me, I'd cross the street and go way around until I could get my second shot. Now I did have more reaction with the second shot, which was a uh, very start of April, but then they say, well, you can't necessarily go by the reaction to how well you're gonna be protected. So I knew I had some protection, but was I well protected? That I just couldn't know until I signed up for this program. So this was the end of August when I signed up for the COVID antibody testing program. And part of the agreement is that you would do it three times, three months apart. So for my first one, it was August 24th, I went in. I got the results on August 27th. Let me show you what it said. First off, my antibody test results are N test negative, S test positive. So the S test or spike protein test only detects antibodies to the spike protein portion of the virus. So this will be positive whether you've been vaccinated or had the virus. The N test only detects antibodies to other parts of the virus. So this will only be positive if you've actually had the virus. So it did find that I had antibodies, but how many did I have? Here you can see my S test was positive and my number was 514. Well, what does 514 mean? From what I could find, the test results for that test can go from zero, where you'd be negative, but if it's positive, it can go up to 2,500. So looking at it as 500 out of 2,500, I'm feeling I'm kind of on the low side. Now they did say in their FAQs, you can't really go by the number to know how much protection you have and that they haven't determined yet what all the number ranges and so forth mean. But still, if 2,500 is the most they're testing for and I'm at 500, I felt like I didn't have the best protection. I did go and search further online looking, hoping other people had posted their results so we could sort of compare notes. And from what I found, a thousand and up was considered, uh, this is all unofficial, I'm not a doctor, I'm just letting you know what I found out about this. The, the, the scuttlebutt was that a thousand and up was a good response. So mine was only middling. So that seemed to confirm what I thought, that my first dose didn't really take because I got it right after finishing chemo. So what's a warrior to do but worry? And once they announced you could get a third dose if you were immunocompromised and they actually recommended that, I got in line for that one and got my shot in September. 
So on September 4th, I got my third dose of Moderna. Now it wasn't a booster dose. The booster dose, I think, is half of a regular dose. This was another full regular dose. And I was curious to see, I did have more reactions that time. <laughs> Yay, unpleasant at the time, but good for thinking maybe um, it's gonna give you more protection. And I couldn't go and get another antibody test because the program I signed up for, it's every three months. So I had to be patient and wait until after Thanksgiving to get my next antibody test, which I did, and here are the results. I scored off the charts greater than 2,500. They don't even measure as high as my antibodies are. And you can see just below that, that I still haven't been exposed to the actual coronavirus. So finally, I stopped worrying, secure in the knowledge that I have as much protection as the vaccines can provide. So that lasted for a few days till I saw the news reports about there's a new variant, the Omicron. Will vaccines protect you against that? Here we go again. Now I choose to believe that my outstanding score of over 2,500 will provide the best of whatever protection these vaccines can, can provide. But when the next vaccine comes out, you'll probably see me somewhere near the front of the line. And then out of the blue, I received in the mail preliminary study results from UT Health, which talks about who's been participating in this and the different information, ages, gender, races, so forth. But on page 11 is what I was really looking for. It's the chart that shows what the antibody numbers mean. So looking at the chart, you can see in the middle, the light blue, that's the range of antibody numbers for people who have not been infected with the virus, but who are fully vaccinated. Those numbers range from 452 to 1,832. So I was right, my 500 score really was at the lower end. And then if you look at the red bar that bumps up to 2,500, the maximum number they tested for, it says fully vaccinated with previous infection ranges from 2,259 to 2,500, but it does say half of those values are greater than 2,500. So that group of people, They've got by far the largest number of antibodies and my number fits right in there. Have you got antibody test scores? Feel free if you want to share them in the comments down below this video. Maybe lots of people are getting over 2,500 and my score's not quite so outstanding. So if you feel free sharing that information, I'd be interested in knowing as I'm sure other people watching this video would and I'll see you on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health, food, and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.